The Lord is my shepherd. Many years ago, a man called Philip Keller produced a book called A Shepherd Looks at Psalm 23. The writer was a shepherd himself, as well as a pastor. He had experience living in Africa and had seen firsthand the life of the Middle Eastern shepherd. It really brought the psalm to life for me. First, as I heard my dad use the book to preach, and secondly, as I read the book myself. I bought a fresh copy on Kindle for this week, when I thought we would return to the Lord, our shepherd, together each day. If you have a Bible handy, have it opened at Psalm 23 each day this week. I'm pleased to have Gary read the psalm for us this morning. Thank you, Gary. Our reading this morning is Psalm number 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. I was checking the recent prices of sheep on farming life, and they range from perhaps £40 to as much as 200 or £250 for a special breed. Apparently, they can still do farm auctions these days, but at a safe social distance, using the internet, of course. When a man or woman decides they want to be a shepherd, they have to consider the cost, the cost of the sheep. A flock of a hundred sheep would cost from many thousands of pounds upwards. It's not a decision to be taken lightly. When you take into account the need the sheep have for fresh water, for lush pasture land, for safely fenced areas, for veterinary care, and for daily inspection. The flock costs a lot more than money. Your time, your care, your planning, your sleep, the costs mount. So when the psalmist David says that the Lord God is his shepherd, he is recognizing the investment of love which God has made in him. And he is worshiping God for the promise that his care is not just for a moment, but for a lifetime. David was a shepherd himself, so he knew. I suspect that most of us know virtually nothing about the shepherd, although we do have some sheep farmers of many years experience among us. And so we do not quite understand fully the nature of the shepherd's approach to their flock. But we know this, don't we? The shepherd has decided to put the sheep first, before sleep, before comfort, before meals, before cost. For they take delight in their sheep. And the Lord is our shepherd. In his book, Keller spoke about the sheep next door, who had a different so-called shepherd. The animals he describes were scrawny, they were ill-fed, they were carrying untreated injuries, they were struggling by on dirty water and parched grass, and would spend their days sometimes looking from outside the fence into his lush pasture and his well-cared-for sheep. You see, the Lord is not the only shepherd out there. There are other less noble shepherds to whom we can also pay allegiance. But the Lord is the one whom David found to be the ideal shepherd, as do we today, who have been blessed to know God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who says, I am 
the Good Shepherd. Let us pray. Father, we pray for all who seek to shepherd others, to give a lead at some sacrifice to themselves. We pray for leaders, remembering our Prime Minister as he returns to his role today, for teachers who continue to guide and lead our young, for clergy and all church workers of every tradition as they seek to lead in these strange times, and for parents who have little lambs to nurture. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for ourselves that we will own you as our shepherd. Help us to appreciate the cost you paid through your Son to win us back to yourself from our wandering after the false shepherds, shepherds of sin and selfishness and the pursuit of success. Help us each day to come to you, the Good Shepherd, for nourishment, encouragement and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all your injured and sickly sheep today, those with undiagnosed illnesses who are fearful of going to seek medical help, those who fear they have the virus and are at a loss of what to do next, those who are struggling to breathe and need medical intervention, and those who are approaching the end of their life on earth, Lord. You know us, each one, and you have sent your Son to be our Saviour. So lift us in your arms today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May you know the Good Shepherd this week in your hearts and lives. For he lived and died and rose again for you and me. Amen. We're going to finish today with a song of commitment led by Michelle and Eric. The power of your love. Lord, I come to you. <laughs> 